These days, the idea of erasing something like a film from existence is kind of ridiculous. Nothing disappears completely. Still, that doesn't mean that studios haven't occasionally done their best to bury a particularly embarrassing film. Here are some movies that studios tried and mostly failed to erase from existence. Fantastic Four Famously filmed on a budget of around $1 million, the 1994 Fantastic Four film was never officially released, being unexpectedly cancelled just a few weeks before its official premiere. Since then, however, low-quality bootleg copies of the film have found their way onto both the internet and DVD. According to legend, the film was so bad that the then-executive at Marvel Entertainment, Avi Arad, bought the rights to the film moments after seeing an advanced copy and ordered that it be cancelled to protect the Marvel brand. Arad would later claim that he additionally ordered every remaining copy of the film be destroyed. Well, the joke's on Marvel. The film Arad thought was so bad that it had to be buried has a higher Rotten Tomato score than two of the three Fantastic Four films that have been released since. Look at it! See it. The Big Boss – Mandarin Cut Regarded as the film that made Bruce Lee famous, at least in Asia, The Big Boss is your standard 1970s Hong Kong action movie and features all of the Bruce Lee staples fans would eventually come to expect in his movies. The only problem is, a big chunk of the movie is missing. Before it was released, the original cut of The Big Boss was effectively destroyed by Hong Kong censors. Known as The Mandarin Cut, this more complete version of Bruce Lee's first major film was more violent, and countless scenes were altered or completely cut from the movie. It's highly unlikely that Bruce Lee fans will ever see a complete version of the film with all of its cut content put back in, largely because nobody knows if it still exists. Citizen Kane – Colorized Version there's little that can be said about Citizen Kane that hasn't already been said, so let's just talk about that time in the late 1980s when media mogul Ted Turner decided it would be a good idea to try and fix Citizen Kane by colorizing it. According to an interview with colorist William Schaefer, at least 10 minutes of Citizen Kane was colorized before the project was put to a stop. A friend of Orson Welles later claimed that one of the last things the director said was, "...don't let Ted Turner deface my movie with his crayons." Depending on who you ask, the colorized footage was either shelved or erased. To date, only around a minute of the footage has emerged, most recently in an obscure 90s BBC documentary about the film. The Star Wars Holiday Special Until the prequels came along, the Star Wars Holiday Special was long considered the single worst piece of Star Wars content ever made. It aired only once, and the special was quickly swept under the rug by Lucasfilm. George Lucas was reportedly very disappointed in the special, and he saw to it that it was effectively buried by having it left out of complete edition box sets and forbidding TV stations from airing it. According to legend, only one person had an official copy of the special, Carrie Fisher, who claimed she received one in trade for recording the commentary of one of the Star Wars DVD box sets. Why did she want a copy? She said that she wanted something she could play at parties when she wanted people to leave. It is so bad, it's not good. <laughs> Superstar – The Karen Carpenter Story Released in 1987, Superstar – The Karen Carpenter Story is a short film that chronicles the final years of singer Karen Carpenter's life. Only instead of using archive footage or actors, the film was made almost entirely with Barbie dolls. Karen and Richard Carpenter – just a couple of kids next door. Although the film was intended to provide a sympathetic overview of Carpenter's life and the struggle she faced, it was decidedly less kind to her family. Her brother Richard sued director Todd Haynes for unlicensed use of the Carpenter's music, and virtually all copies of the film were quietly destroyed. Haynes himself was banned from ever airing the personal copy he had tucked away. This didn't stop resourceful fans. Today, several low-quality versions have surfaced on YouTube. Nosferatu Considered by film buffs to be one of the most influential horror movies ever made, Nosferatu was among the first films to adapt Bram Stoker's Dracula to the big screen. The problem was, Stoker's widow never gave anyone permission to make the movie. The first thing she did after the film came out was sue Prana Film, the studio that released it. When the courts ruled that the film was a blatant rip-off of Stoker's novel, they ordered that every copy be destroyed. An order that was carried out so thoroughly, it's believed only a single copy of the film survived the purge. This copy then circulated over the coming decades until the copyright on the Dracula novel expired and the film could come back to life. Nosferatu! 
Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.